Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jeremy. I'm here with my 2018 Africa Twin manual transmission. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about my tubeless rim conversion. Um, I've seen a lot on the internet about how people do tubeless conversions and so I just wanted to describe how I went about my process. Uh, disclaimers, I'm not suggesting anyone else do this. Do it on your, at your own risk. Uh, you know, I did some research online. How do you do the tubeless conversion? It, a lot of people use the 3M I think it's 4411N tape, ceiling tape, something like that. You can do the research, a lot of people use it. Great sticky tape, so I bought myself a roll. I think it's an inch and a half wide, it's about five yards long, it's about 20 bucks online. Um, I started to do the rim and then I was like, well, wait a minute, what do I seal the, uh, the spoke nipples with? I didn't wanna just put the tape over them even though I know somebody, some people have done that. So initially, I tried to use 3M black super weather strip and gasket adhesive. The description of that sounded like it was super sticky and would stand up to all kinds of weather conditions. And so I put some on my rim, you know, put some on the spoke nipple. Um, and then I said, you know what, let me go ahead and check the uh, chemical data sheet, basically. Unfortunately, this stuff has a boiling point of between 145 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which didn't seem very high to me. I did not feel safe with this. It would literally start boiling in my rim on a hot day and so yeah that was out as a ceiling for spoke nipples so then i happened to be at my local walmart and i saw this stuff flex seal right maybe you've seen the commercial on american tv it's a rubberized compound that's uh comes in kind of like a thick liquid form cool thing about this is and it was good for somewhere between negative 60 degrees fahrenheit to 350. It does dry and, and more of a flexible uh type thing so but i did run into a little bit of a got you still and so i hope you enjoy a couple of clips and photos I did while I was doing the processing and I can describe what was happening. So naturally, before we actually start, we're going to want to take the old tire off the rim or the current tire and then the um, rubber um, um, spoke nipple ring that goes around the inside of the rim. And then we're going to want to clean it really good. So the way I did it was I grabbed a nylon brush here with some soapy water. I use nylon because the brushes will keep their shape when you press down versus a wire brush that gets all ratty. So anyway, just a nylon brush and some soapy water. I go around the rim, pay close attention to the nipple heads to make sure you get all that sand that may be down in there. Then I rinse off the rim a little bit with just a little bit of clean water, and then I follow up with some acetone. Uh, this is commonly called nail polish remover. I use the 100% acetone here. And what that does is get any of the film that may be remaining on the rim from um, that rubber um, barrier or anything else. You don't want any fingerprint oil, any skin oil on the rim. And so here you can see I'm doing the second coat on the tire. So I always stir the flex seal while it's in the can and then I take my brush and at first I dab the spoke nipples just to make sure that that stuff seeps down into the cracks of the spoke nipples and then I just smooth out the coating. Now typically I do two rounds of this per layer so if you just do this and stop here, the, the flex seal is kind of streaky and I wanted it smooth. So I wanted it a little bit thicker than normal, but I went ahead and dabbed each spokehead nipple, went all the way around first to give it just a little bit of cure time, because even though this stuff goes on really thick, it will run. And so you don't want to do too much at once. You, you just want enough that, you know, you want to build it in layers. So what I did was I, I did the first round, dabbed the spoke nipples, then I decided to spread it all around, you know, got enough on there that as it dried, it kind of smoothed out and was shiny. And then I let it cure for about 24 hours. I took the rim inside. The great stuff about this is it does not have a horrible smell to it. Um, it's supposedly non-toxic. I don't want to test that, but... Um, it doesn't really have a, a horrible smell about it, so it's okay to bring it inside on your wheel stand or somewhere and, and let it dry. Now I did on my first coat, I think I put it on a little too thick at first, and so I let it sit on my wheel stand for a couple of hours and then I turned my wheel 180 degrees and propped it up with a board on the uh, sprockets and let it sit there. That way I didn't have any run spots, any high spots where this stuff would run because although it is really thick it will run if you put too much on it once but just use your best judgment it's not rocket science so as you can see here I'm just lightly abrading the rim 
I didn't want to scratch too much of the flex seal away because at this time it's a pretty thin coating on the heads of the spoke nipples and so I don't want to rub it completely away. I just want to put some fine scratches in it. Afterward, I wiped it up with a little bit of warm water and a paper towel, making sure it was nice and clean. There weren't any specks of the flex seal hanging around. And then I took my air compressor and just blew it off a little. So after all is said and done, this is what my rear rim looks like. You can notice the flex seal has cured. This is again, I waited 24 hours between um, major layers and it, and it cures to a very shiny it's actually quite flexible and uh, it seems to adhere very well. I actually could not get the 3M tape to stick to it. I didn't really want to abrade the second layer. I thought, well, you know what? This stuff is fairly thick and it seems to be airtight. So I put my uh, wheel on my rim, uh, you know, submerged it underwater. Of course, you could use the soapy water spray bottle method also. Made sure I really inspected my uh, spokes and around the uh, valve stem and uh, everything was fine. I had no leaks. I had a few tiny bubbles come out of the spokes, but that was just from air trapped in between the flex seal and, and the um, outside of the rim. You know, if you have a constant flow of bubbles, obviously you have a leak, but um, I, I didn't see any kind of flow of bubbles, just a few tiny minor ones with just trapped air in between the flex seal and the rim itself. And after that, you know, I double checked, I waited a few moments, inspect both sides of the tires, and it was great. So one quick uh, extra note that I forgot in the original video, make sure you get the right uh, valve stem or valve or whatnot for your tire. So I was at the Auto Potch store, and I saw these things, and I'm like, well, the top of this fits. Um, so maybe it will poke through the rim, right? But this is nowhere near long enough to go through the rim and, and give you room to put a cap on or to air it up. Uh, I have another one that you'll see. Uh, actually, I probably don't have it out here, so that is my poor preparation. But anyway, I, I tried about two different types, maybe three, and none of them worked. And then I, I found the awesome video that I'll link below with another guy who did his tubeless conversion, and, and uh, I'll duplicate the part number. Uh, I know auto zone or sorry napa napa auto store sells them but you can get them any, anywhere just make sure um, this one specifically said for motorcycle rims so there you have it uh a tubeless conversion at least on the rear rim i can do the front though for about 25 27 dollars so this stuff at walmart was about 15 dollars for 16 ounces and i i didn't even use half of it on the rear rim so i'm sure the front I have plenty for the front. This was about $15. And then each of the valve stems from the uh, Napa Auto Parts store were about $5 or $6 each. So um, yeah, seems to be working great. Okay, so there you have it, the process and why I did not end up using the 3M tape. Nothing wrong with the 3M tape. It seems pretty good and pretty sticky. But the Flexil was just... Uh, so uh, shiny, I guess, of a coating that this stuff does not stick to it at all, which is pretty amazing because this stuff is pretty sticky. But the Flex Seal, two coats of that stuff, and so far I've been riding about five or six days now on and off. It's been really cold in the morning here in the high desert of Albuquerque, uh, or right outside of Albuquerque, actually, even higher elevation. I'm, I'm at about 6,400 feet. Uh, and so in the morning, it gets down to about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And then during the day, it gets to up it's getting up to about 65. So I've put about 200 miles on it. I actually had a fairly technical, a little bit of gnarly riding uh, today, actually. Um, maybe I'll make a video of that eventually. And I haven't lost any air. So the rear uh, tube is holding up just, sorry, the rear rim without a tube is holding up just fine. I think eventually I'm going to do the front um, rim, even though I do run a, a tube in the front because the rim doesn't have that safety edge that people describe for tubeless tires. This stuff is, is essentially replaces your, um, your rubber nipple ring that may already, you know, that's already on your rim to, to protect the tube. So this is just acts like that. It's just weather, you know, it's uh, uh, airtight and it's a lot thicker, you know, depending on how many coats you use. I use two coats in retrospect. I probably would have uh, braided my rim just a little bit with some sandpaper and made sure it was really clean and then maybe did three coats. But two seem to be holding up fine on this. And um, if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks. Enjoy.